I'm at a gypsy. So let's talk about motocross specifically okay. uh, and dive in a little bit more. I'll try just do, for, dis- yeah. for disclosure. I don't, I don't, other than working with a few of the athletes, I know very, very little about the sport, Yeah, but I, but I understand mechanics and I can, I'll apply that yeah, to whatever I'd be more I can. Inter- yeah. I'd be interested to hear what you think about mm-hmm. the mechanics sure. as it's applied to motocross, like mm-hmm. Chad Reed, Chase Sexton, I'm pretty sure Hayden Deegan, who's one of the up and coming superstars is he's started doing it from that cool. podcast with chase actually great um and then jet lawrence i'm not sure if you've heard of him I, I i watched a race and that he won recently how is his posture yeah he's very what do you see when you see him can i see if do you have a picture of him do you can i can i see it i, I can't remember exactly of him, like, riding yeah just show me a picture um i i think so let me give my best example uh is it ken roxon or rosen Ken Roxon. Ken Roxon. So I met Ken through Peter. I don't want to give any impression that I have some major relationship with him. I just got to meet him through Peter and he'd been doing foundation training with Peter for a while. Yeah. And I got to kind of be there and tune him up a little bit, you know, but he started, he, he had a couple posts that went out and he made the correlation. He's, you know, he would tag foundation training in it because his posture was a founder mm. as, as, I mean, it was literally, That's I couldn't, what I'm saying, like, I couldn't improve it. Yeah. It was perfect when he's on the motorcycle. Yeah. yeah, and Chase, I've seen pictures of Chase. Same thing, exactly. Like yeah. it's perfect. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I was as good of a teacher with Chad. No, I'm just kidding. Chad, did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, Chad, Chad was, was unreal. The, he was in the exact same position. Well, when Chad, you go back and look at it. I got to watch Chad with comebacks. Like we mm. got to see him make like I, the injuries that I saw him sustain. Oh my god! Mental I mean, falling from twenty foot to just the ground. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I mean. I actually, there's two exercises that I actually developed because of Chad, with Chad. Oh, right. Uh, there, they became my lateral hinge and a, a little bit of a change to my, my windmill exercise. But Chad will remember this very well. He's always had a hip issue and we would like put one foot up on a pedestal and then do these hip hinging exercises. And he would look at me like, what, what is that? Like, yeah. Just do that. And uh, it worked, you know, and <laughs> it was, it's. What I know about motocross is you're moving really quickly and you have to absorb extraordinary, you have to absorb your body's weight from numerous vectors as quickly as possible without losing speed. Yeah. So you can't have much movement. Yeah. And you have to have your weight only enough back that it doesn't lean the weight into the back tire. Yeah. So with that, you need to have an extremely strong hip socket and the muscles that surround it. And that hip socket needs to be the furthest thing behind you mm. by far. If the hips are the furthest thing behind you, it's going to be much harder to flex the spine in the wrong places. It's going to be much easier to sit into the saddle, the glutes, the hamstrings, the adductors. Think of a ham. You you slice through a ham and you got the bone and then all the meat that surrounds the bone. Adductors, hamstrings, glutes, Mm. big, thick muscles that surround these. Those are the muscles that stabilize. If those are stabilizing accurately, which is both a press down a pull back and a squeeze in, glute, hamstring, adductor. Those keep the knees directed forward like like eyeballs. The knees directed forward and not turned out a little bit is, it's a secret. It's the missing, it's the thing that connects the nervous system to not break and fold. So knees forward, hips back. And then that last lever, the first lever we talked about, the occiput the base of the skull, allowing the body. So if we're here on a bike, you don't want to be here at the neck. You want to be here at the neck, mm. strong as a fucking ox. Just like, so every bump isn't doing this. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. the worst thing you could do. <laughs> Dude, and that's what sometimes I say, like when I'm trying to go fast, it's like my fucking eyes are vibrating. It's because I'm like. Yeah, and if you stabilize. And if you see Jet Lawrence, so I'll just show you a video of Jet. Something real quick that people can do, anybody can do, get yourself a vibration plate at home. They sell them on Amazon. They're, they just have like an oscillation. You just stand on it. It vibrates. You'll find positions that jatter, that, that jolt you and make you, you <laughs> rattle you. And then you'll stabilize and draw the hips back and lift the skull. And all of a sudden that rattling is just perfectly placed through muscles. There's no rattling. Hmm. It's an instant education and stability and a good thing to practice. Hmm. But it's all about finding the positions that you don't rattle in. Damn, you just blew my fucking mind. That's what we do. Because I can, fu- I can fully visualize that. Yeah, so right? like You've probably felt it before. Like this, I don't know how much writing is going to be in this, but 
um this is this is jet like his posture is insane and you can his, i mean his neck posture is extremely strong that's the difference hey, talk, talking to the mic just oh, i'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. the uh the so watching jet i uh, the the first thing that i saw in him and you can see it in the guy next to him too who doesn't do it boom and then as soon as he hit a front bump one of two things going to happen as soon as that front wheel hits either your shoulder blades are going to let this happen bad that's weak see what my neck does <clears throat> or your lats are going to engage and it's going to go like this <clears throat> yeah and that's what jet did huh all right we'll go find a, something that's got a bit more riding footage for you yeah, this is like a this has been a lesson in motocross and supercross. Uh, you'd think I would have tried it over the years. One of the coolest experiences I had was um, is, I think this is just riding. We went to a track in uh, Los Alamos, uh, Los Alamitos, with uh, Chad Reed once, and he just jumped over me a bunch of times. <laughs> it was really cool. <laughs> yeah, his absorption is phenomenal. He doesn't break his shoulder blades forward. He doesn't retract his shoulder blades and squeeze them together. Really? So it allows his lats to take over. Yeah, it's 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 excellent. It's very visible. I mean, uh, yeah, actually. He just landed a huge jump and it was perfect. His elbows came back and his back stayed strong. Yeah. Yeah. That was really cool. I'd love, it'd be really cool to like link you up with him. He's only yeah. 20, just 20 year old kid. He just went, he just won 22 motos in a row in outdoors. Oh, all of them. First rookie. Two, 250 or 450? 450. Oh my God. Rookie season. Is he a big guy? He, it'd be about maybe. Because I'm six foot, maybe yeah. it's like similar to me, maybe a time, like maybe wow. like five eleven or something like that. That's amazing. Has yeah. anybody else ever done anything like that? Not in their first year. There's wow. been two other guys have a perfect season: Who's Ricky, that? Ricky Carmichael and James Stewart, two okay. big yeah. names. Yeah, James uh, Stewart was really big when Chad was going. I remember his name a yeah. lot. I never yeah. worked with him, but I remember his name. So yeah, it's interesting to see, but like Jet's neck posture. That's it's it. Like, it's like Formula One, man. Like he's well, just... exactly. And the reason that Formula One is so important, do I have to be? like this yeah. is because the second your body has G force against it, if there's a break in the chain, if you can't pull back, you're like, ah, you're being pulled into this weak vector hard. Yeah. And it's very dangerous. Yeah. Very, very dangerous. That, that rotational vector doesn't occur. Like you're not going around a turn with that force in riding and you get to angle into it, which is extremely helpful. But in, in, in racing, in, uh, in, in car racing, they're never having to go through this force, which motocross is nonstop. That lift of the occiput will do more for people than I think they can imagine. And understanding that your shoulder blades need to move away from each other, not towards each other, will do a lot. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like Shoulder a, blades away from each other, not towards each other. Because that's one thing I notice when I ride. So my lower half of my body mm -hmm. is pretty dialed. Okay. Like that's what I've spent the last, like, honestly, since 2019. Congratulations. Basically. So I can kind of like get into that posture. Okay. I'd you say can like get into founder it. posture. Yeah. And like I can feel it when I ride and it's fairly second nature when I'm riding like well. But I still don't have like the top, like the top half. And I, I feel like I go into a turn and I just feel like my, I just so collapse, you know. That's because you have to go up before you compress, meaning. So decompression is all about lifting the rib cage out and back and wide and stretching out the rib cage and stretching the clavicles away from each other and expanding the shoulder blades away from each other and creating that scaffolding space so that those muscles can better contract and, and stay stable. Muscles hate going from short to shorter. So if you're riding with this neck position, they have your traps, your SCMs, they have nowhere to go. They have nowhere they can go. So all of that jolting is just kind of going through your shoulder joints, through your back. As soon as the leverage is lifted, lever, lever, leverage. Think of that, that idea. Leverage is one of the most important concepts in nature. Yeah. Who, leverage your skull who behind said, you. Who and said, up. give me a lever long enough and I'll move the world. Yeah, exactly. There you go. One of the oldest and most yeah. amazing quote. I forget who said it. But so your body. It's like Archimedes or some shit. Your body is built on levers. Yeah. And, and, and when they go wrong, they go wrong. When they go right, it's beautiful, beautiful, stable structure. It's incredible how it works. Um, you identified it perfectly. What Jet is doing is he's stabilizing his torso towards expansion so that when it compresses, it has space to compress. Does he know he's doing it? No idea. No, I doubt it. No idea. I have no idea, but he's doing it. And it's something that other riders can learn from without question. And if you're like, oh, what, what do I do? What do I do? Look at the world in front of you like it smells terribly the whole time you're riding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
and just keep that for now. You'll get better at it. But for now, just keep your, keep your nose away from what's in front of you. Not towards it. Don't yeah. smell your way forward. Smells bad. Pull your nose away from it. Keep going. That's the first start. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's so cool that you can just see that <clears throat> instantly in, in him with like the Un- neck. It's got nothing to do with writing. It has everything to do with looking at relationships of head and shoulders when force goes through the body, when something good happens, when force goes through the body, when something bad happens. Yeah. And, and seeing those things over and over and over again makes it very hard not to see them. We are excited to announce the launch of our new membership site, gypsytales.com, packed with exclusive content and perks that you won't find anywhere else. This is your chance to become a part of the Gypsy Gang. And as a special bonus, if you sign up to an annual membership, you'll be entered into the draw to win our custom-built TC125. Gypsy Gang.